Uh, it's Neil Davis. I'm down at the Lyceum Theatre. We're at the opening night of the Defending the Caveman play. I'm standing by with the star of the show. You'll probably know him as Joe Mangle from Neighbours. It's Mark Little. Thanks for joining us, Mark. Brilliant, Neil. Thanks for having me, mate. Tell us a little bit about Defending the Caveman and how you come to be involved in this particular project. Yeah, well, that happened uh, actually 10 years ago, 1999. It was it dumped on my um, desk like any actor, this monologue. I read it, I really liked it, and I sort of hunted it down and sort of got the job. There was like thousands of comedians, they asked, a lot of comedians in England and a lot of performers between the ages of, you know, 25 and 35. Um, but I was chosen as the British caveman. Did it in the West End for nine months. It was like a long-running show in the West End. There wasn't, hadn't been many long-running one-man shows in the West End. And they gave us a launch Libby Award. And um, on and on it's gone. It used to be owned by an American, Rob Becker, the writer. Um, but he doesn't own it anymore. It's now um, out of his hands, so I've been able to change the script and take out all the Americanisms and all the Oprah Winfrey sort of therapy, theatre's therapy sort of stuff, and just make keep it an entertainment, but also with the message. And, um, yeah, it's now ten years I've been associated with this play. There uh, seem to be a lot of personal stories within the play. Were they your actual personal stories, or were they part of the actual play? They're all written there. They're all his observations. He's been very clever. And I just play every man, you know, and just and write my wife into the play, who's actually directed this last piece. So it's a lot different to the American cavemans. And um, but uh, no, I've all these stories. The only the only story in that I've added is sat nav over the cliff and um, being trapped on the couch in front of the channel. Yeah, we've all had experience of doing that. Everyone knows uh, that. One when too. you play Joe Mangle in Neighbours, you seem to have a lot of depressing storylines. Uh, do you enjoy doing the drama or do you prefer doing the comedy roles? I like comedy, I like drama, I like them both together. But when uh, I left Neighbours because it got too much one way, there was just too much. And it wasn't drama, you know, in, in that sort of um, genre, they mistake death for drama. So they have to have a death for it to be dramatic so they can, people can burn on the waterworks and stuff. So once we'd carried popped off and they saw how well that had worked, then they started... <laughs> they had people all around me start to die off. No, it just got, it just got too much. Um, too much sadness, too much tragedy around Joe Mangle. So I left because I it said it's, it's not funny anymore. So, I mean, I do like... I like the drama. I like it a lot. I, I like drama and comedy working hand in hand. I think Joe had a lot of that going on. One minute you're laughing at him, next minute you're like, oops. But in the end it got too much and I, that's why I left. As Harold's left the show, how much of an impact do you think that'll have on not so much the show but the fan base? I have no idea. I, I'm surprised there's still a fan base there. But I'm sure it's to do with a lot to do with the old neighbours, but there's not many of them left. But I was there when he died the first time. So you know, I mourned Harold and it didn't seem to stop the show then when he died the first time so I don't think it's going to stop it dying the second time it's in people's DNA now neighbours so if it's on people will watch it how did your roles in Casualty and Emmerdale come about? Oh, they were just like an actor looking for some work there wasn't much work around um, someone had I don't know I must, have, must have seen me on some bit of telly or something I'd done but anyway all of a sudden there was all this interest and so Casualty asked me to do a role Emmerdale asked me to do a role. I said yes. I shouldn't have done the Emmerdale one. I, I'm thinking back. I, I didn't read that one, but it was it was a bit of money at the time. But it wasn't a very good role. It was a bit silly. Yeah, because Emmerdale at the moment they've got Emily Simons and they've also got Anne Charleston as well. So right, I think yeah. they were trying to apply to the old soap fans type thing. Yeah, it was a bit uh, yeah a bit cynical. I thought I, I, I should have come back as a Dingle. I should have been Joe Dingle. Who's been your biggest influence over the years? Oh, biggest influence. I think it's it's people who push the boat out, you know, like, um, and so that changes. Artistically, I like, you know, film directors like Herzog and Scorsese and um, actors, you know, there hasn't been too many actors around lately, you know, um, to really inspire me. So I found the last 20 years a, a little uninspiring since the 70s, really since when I, when I was at acting school because there's no one around at the moment that I look up to and think I really want to be like that maybe Obama I wouldn't mind being like that he's a smart cluey man I like that but yeah he'd be, he's my big hero at the moment 
If you're stranded on a desert island, what three items would you take with you and why? Oh, mate, what three items would I take with me? Oh, mate, I don't know. I, I need my pocket knife. Um, that'll do. Am I on a desert island, am I? Oh, mate, that's all I need. And a case of beer. Don't even need the beer. No, we'll make something out of the coconut. We'll sort something out. No, just just a desert island is plenty for me, thanks. Can I have this? Can I stay there? Sounds like a good idea, yeah, though, no. doesn't it? Three things will just clutter it up. I'll yeah. just lose them anyway. <laughs> uh, if you could work with anyone in the world, dead or alive, who would it be and why? If I could work with anyone. Werner Herzog. I'd like to, I'd like to be directed by Werner Herzog in a film. Very much so. I think he's a clever man. And um, who else is there at the moment? I think... Um, Who's the boy that made This Is England, that director? Really clever. His name? Uh, I'd like to work with him. Ken Loach, I wouldn't mind working with him. I like, like, well, I like, always liked his product and the way he works. Um, yeah, there's a few people about. But uh, let's say Werner first. All right, thanks, Mark, for your time. And thanks also to Cheshire East Council for setting this interview up this evening. This is Neil Davis at the Lyceum Theatre for The Cat, 87.7 FM. This is-